Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Nanos, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our bleeding and coagulation playlist. In today's video, we'll discuss Bernard Soulier syndrome. It's a problem in the GP1B receptor, which is on the surface of the platelet. When you have a problem with this receptor, you will not be able to bind the von Willebrand factor on the subendothelial collagen of the blood vessel. If you cannot bind GP1B to von Willebrand factor, this is called problem in platelet adhesion. When there is no adhesion, there is no aggregation. When there is no aggregation, there is no primary hemostasis, and therefore there is no secondary hemostasis. The symptoms will include bleeding diathesis. Let me answer the question of the previous video. What disease is TRAP positive? Tartrate resistant acid phosphatase. This is a stain. What disease is positive for the stain? It's called hairy cell leukemia. I have a video about this topic in my hematology playlist. And we are trapped in the bleeding and coagulation series. Please watch these videos in order. Steps of hemostasis include vasoconstriction, temporary plate plug or primary hemostasis, coagulation or secondary hemostasis, fibrinosis, etc. Where is the problem in Bernard Soulier? It's a problem in the temporary plate plug. It's a problem in the primary hemostasis. It's a problem in the platelet. Is it a problem with the platelet number or platelet function? Usually both, but most importantly, platelet function. Why platelet function? Because you have a problem with the GP. 1B receptor. You cannot adhere to the von Willebrand factor in the subendothelial collagen in the vessel wall. When you cannot adhere, you cannot aggregate. When you cannot aggregate, you cannot form a plated plug. When you cannot form a plated plug, you cannot form coagulation cascade. And of course, you won't be able to form a strong fibrin thrombus. Bleeding and coagulation, we have vasoconstriction, primary hemostasis, secondary hemostasis, fibrin. Where is the problem in Bernard Soulier in the primary hemostasis? It's a disease in primary hemostasis. What's going to happen to the plate count? It could be normal or it could be low. What's going to happen to the bleeding time? It's going to be prolonged. What's going to happen to the ristocetin induced platelet aggregation? It's going to be down because the function of ristocetin is to force the GP1B and the von Willebrand factor to fuse together. But when I have no GP1B, I will not be able to be stimulated by ristocetin. That's why ristocetin induced platelet aggregometry is low. Please don't give these patients aspirin. Why not? Because aspirin is anti-platelets and their platelets are already screwed. Another reason is these patients are usually young and we do not give aspirin to young people. Why not? Let me know the answer in the comment section. These are the steps of platelet plug formation, adhesion, activation and secretion, and then aggregation. How does the platelet know that we are bleeding? The platelet is like a police officer inspecting the gate. Is the gate safe and secure and intact or no? If the gate is open, if the vessel is open, Houston, we have a problem. It's also similar to the engineer who inspects the wall on the inside of the building to know whether an earthquake happened or not. If you see a cracked wall, there was an earthquake. If the platelet recognized a cracked injured endothelium, it means we're bleeding. Primary hemostasis, baby, what are the steps? Platelets are cruising through the bloodstream. And then they found a problem, an injured endothelium. They will swell and they will grow some pseudopods, false legs. After they form their fake freaking legs, they will adhere to the subendothelial collagen, to the von Willebrand factor to be specific. How do they adhere? Using their GP1B receptor. The actual sophisticated name of this receptor is GP. 1B95. Why? Because factor 9 and factor 5, these are coagulation factors, are part of this receptor complex. So where is the problem in Bernard Soulier? You either have a deficiency of the GP1B or a defect in the GP1B. It's either a decreased number of these receptors or a decreased function of these receptors. That's why these patients will suffer from an adhesion defect. And as a response, when the bone marrow is realizing, oh, these platelets suck and they cannot adhere, let me produce more megakaryocytes so that we can produce more platelets so that maybe, maybe we can ameliorate the problem. You know the difference between temporary platelet plug and coagulation cascade, right? You know that the hemostasis disorders are either primary hemostasis defects or secondary hemostasis defects. These are called bleeding diathesis. When it comes to the primary hemostasis disorders, we either have a platelet problem or a vessel problem. Regarding the platelet problem, low number, thrombocytopenia, or low function, thrombasthenia. 
What is Bernard Soulier? Bernard Soulier is both, but more importantly, it's a thromb of Rickingasthenia. Platelet number, platelet function. To test for the platelet number, you need a platelet count. To test for platelet function, you need bleeding time or platelet aggregometry. Condition it's called thrombocytopenia, here called thrombostenia. Bernard Soulier leads to thrombostenia and it can also lead to thrombocytopenia. But these platelets are not just low in number, they are low in number and giant in size. It's called macro thrombocytopenia. I love this word. Please help me reach 250,000 subscribers by the end of the month and I will give you something cool. Since Bernard Soulier lead to thrombostenia, let's talk about thrombostenia. Bleeding diatheses are either primary hemostasis or secondary hemostasis defect. If it's primary hemostasis, either the problem in the platelets or a problem in the freaking vessel. Regarding the platelets, either decreased number or decreased function. Decreased function is called thrombostenia. Why is there decreased function in Bernard Soulier? Because there are problem with the GP1B receptor on the platelet. They cannot adhere. These are the causes of thrombostenia. This is one of the most important slides in the entire stinking video. Why are my platelets weak? It could be a problem in the GP1B. Could be a problem in the GP2B3A. It could be a toxin attacking the platelets, or could be drugs destroying my platelets. Give me an example of GP1B defect, Bernard Soulier syndrome. Give me an example of a GP2B3 defect, Glensman thrombostenia. Give me an example of a platelet toxin, uremia, kidney failure. Give me an example of drugs that can alter and affect and how are my platelets. These include aspirin and non-steroidals, they are cyclooxygenase inhibitors, but aspirin is irreversible, non-steroidals are reversible. Do aspirin and non-steroidals block the cyclooxygenase 1 or the cyclooxygenase 2? They block both, but mostly cyclooxygenase 1. Other class of medications include P2Y12 inhibitors, clopidogrel, prasugrel, teclopidine, ticagrelor, or the famous Brillinta. Please watch my previous video. GP2B3 inhibitors, epsiximab, tirofiban, eptifabetide, phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitors, dipyridamol, silostazole. Platelet adhesion, platelet activation, platelet aggregation. Adhesion problem is called Bernard Soulier. Aggregation problem is called Glensman thrombasthenia. There are other diseases that can lead to aggregation problems, include uremia in case of renal failure, paraproteinemia in case of multiple myeloma because these O2 antibodies are nasty and they are everywhere and they destroy the GP2B3A. There is a disease called ITP, immune thrombocytopenic purpura, and it also harms the GP2B3A receptor. In a previous video, we have compared between GP1B receptor and GP2B3A receptor. This is the actual name, this is the actual name. Location, glycoprotein in the platelet, part of the glycoprotein code of the platelet. Function, adhesion, function, aggregation. Disease, Bernard Soulier. It also could be attacked by O2 antibodies in ITP. How about diseases that affect GP2B3A? It's deficient in Glensman thrombosthenia. It's attacked by O2 antibodies in ITP. It's attacked by paraproteins in multiple myeloma. It's impaired by uremia in renal failure. Influence of ADP. It's not influenced by ADP, but GP2B3A is influenced by ADP. And that's why if I have Glensman thrombosthenia and they did the platelet aggregometry to me and they added the agonist, ADP, I'm not going to aggregate. Are there any drugs that inhibit GP1B? I don't know any. How about GP2B3? Yeah, the GP2B3 inhibitors. Epsiximab, tirofiban, eptifabetide, roxifiban, and orbofiban. Who named these things? Bleeding diathesis. Your problem is either primary or secondary hemostasis. Primary, it's either the platelets or the vascular disorders. Platelets, platelet number or platelet function. Decreased platelet number is thrombocytopenia. Decreased platelet function is thrombosthenia. We've talked about thrombocytopenia before. It's either pseudo, if you use the purple top tube, or true. Thrombosthenia is problem with platelet adhesion, problem with platelet secretion, or problem with platelet aggregation. Here is a more sophisticated way of looking at it. Let me give you examples of each. Platelet adhesion defect, Bernard Soulier. Storage pool disease, it's called storage pool disease. Disorders of platelet secretion, we have alpha granule deficiencies and delta or dense granules deficiency. Can you give me an example of alpha granule deficiency? Yes, it's a disease called gray platelet syndrome. How about dense or delta granule deficiency? We have three diseases. We have Shidiak Higashi syndrome, we have Wiskott Aldrich syndrome, and we have thrombocytopenia with absent radius disease. How about defects of platelet aggregation? We have Glensman thrombosthenia, 
uremia, paraproteinemia, and immune thrombocytopenia, or ITP. Whether the problem is in the platelets or in the vessel, primary hemostasis defect clinically presents as mucocutaneous or superficial bleeding. Mucocutaneous, skin and muc, skin, petechia, purpurinic, hemos, mucosal bleeding, epistaxis, the most common, easy bruising, bleeding from scratches, gingival bleeding, mineralgia, etc., etc. But there is no deep anatomical bleeding, there is no latri bleeding, there is no hemarthrosis, no deep muscle bleeding, no cranial bleeding in the vast majority of cases. These happen in secondary hemostasis defects, not primary. Where's the problem in Bernard Soulier? It's in the GP1B receptor. Could be problem in the number or in the function. Bernard Soulier syndrome, etiology, congenital, it's inherited, it's hereditary specifically autosomal recessive epidemiology, infant or child pathophysiology, deficient or defective, GP1B95, which will lead to decreased platelet adhesion, clinically mucocutaneous bleeding, skin, mucous membrane, diagnosis, platelet count is low, usually, or it could be normal, bleeding time is always high, Platelet aggregometry. If you add ADP, epinephrine, collagen, or arachidonic acid, you will get normal aggregation. But if you add aristocetin, you will have no aggregation. Peripheral smear will show you giant, large platelets. And of course, there is increased number of megakaryocytes. A large, giant platelet called macro thrombocytopenia. Why macro? Because it's large. Why thrombocytopenia? Because there is decreased platelet number. And that's why the mnemonic for Bernard so the A is the platelets are big suckers. They are big because they are giant. They are suckers because they suck. That's why your bleeding time is high. Of course, we're not making fun of patients. I'm just trying to make medicine easy for you. Treatment, platelet transfusion. Of course, if you have bad platelets, give the patient platelets. Desmopressin, it expresses von Willebrand factor. So maybe, just maybe, we can interact with as many GP1B receptors as possible. Tranexamic acid, recombinant factor seven. I have a premium antibiotics course on my website. It has 40 videos. For students who are super sophisticated to the point of being stupid, there is something called pseudo Bernard Soulier. It's very rare. We have antibodies against this GP1B, not deficiency or defect, actual freaking antibodies. We have two types of BSS, heterozygous, near normal plated function, homozygous, abnormal plated function. You'll have symptoms, low plated count, High bleeding time. Ristocetin cofactor assay or ristocetin induced platelet aggregometry can help distinguish between Bernard Soulier and Glenzman thrombocenia. In case of Bernard Soulier, RIPA is low, but in case of Glenzman thrombocenia, RIPA is within normal limits. Why is it low in case of Bernard Soulier? Because the function of ristocetin is to force. GP1B and von Willebrand factor to interact together. If you don't have GP1B, you're not going to interact together, so it's gonna be low. But in Glensman, your problem is not in the GP1B or in the von Willebrand, your problem is in the GP2B3A. I have a 50 hematology cases at medicosisperfectionalist.com. These are really hard. We have talked about ristocetin agrogometry in the previous video. Remember, this test is abnormal in von Willebrand and Bernard Soulier, but it is normal in Glensman. Question of the day, which of the following graphs represent which of these patients? So here is platelet aggregometry. You add an agent or an agonist and the platelets aggregate. What are these graphs and what do they correspond for? Like one, Bernard Soulier. Is this Bernard Soulier or this one or this one? Uh, like match. Let me know the answer in the comment section. You'll find the correct answers in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Please share. You can get my antibiotics course and my 50 hematology cases at medicosisperfectionalist.com. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense.